couple of years down the road, you wake up on a Sunday morning. You uh, kind of lay in bed, scroll on your phone for a little bit. You don't have yeah. shit to do, you know. It's gonna be a lazy Sunday. You're gonna maybe go to the go to the grocery store, perhaps. You might throw a fucking steak on the grill later. <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Steak on a Sunday. Steak on a Sunday. That's what you sing to yourself when you uh, <laughs> go to the grocery store and you pick out that fucking porterhouse. All right. You spring for it. Sure. You get a you get a russet potato. You get a head of broccoli. You got spices and stuff at home, but you're just going to make a fucking steak, potato, broccoli. It's like steamed broccoli, you know, maybe a little butter, a little, maybe a little lemon on there if you're feeling froggy. Ribbit, ribbit. So you're, uh, you know, that's really all you're planning on going to the grocery store, getting some food, firing up the grill. Putting on the fucking game, right? Hanging out in the, uh, I mean, you know how it is in the fall, right? In yeah. the evening. It's nice. Yeah, you, you got fucking long pants on. You're, you're fine. Okay. Good to know. It's a beautiful night. You're, uh, You're outside, you're grilling, right? Yeah, fuck yeah. It's like 7.30, you know? Ugh. You flip this porterhouse, perfectly seared. <laughs> you think it only needs like another 90 seconds. Oh, okay, cool. You know, you're like, you're, you got it right there. You do, you do the reverse sear method where you... uh you know, put it in a pan and put it in the oven to bring it up to temp and then you sear it on the hot coals, you know, over the hot coals. Sure. Okay. How's that? Is, is that like a better way to do it or? Yeah, that's like a, I, th I think it's probably like a commonly accepted, like if you're going to cook a steak at home. Yeah. I usually do yeah. it the other way around. Yeah. Usually you, you, you get like, so you could sous vide or like uh, put it in the oven to bring the internal temp up and then it's all evenly cooked, you know? Yeah. And then you sear it. And that's like, that's the reverse sear method. It's the way to go. Interesting. Okay. You I'll reverse sear this fucking porterhouse. You got a baked potato in the oven. You just steam the broccoli in the microwave. Normally, you know, you, if it were, if you were, if it were something important or you had guests over, you might do it a little differently, but this, you're just doing this quick and dirty because you are ready to fucking eat your dinner. Cool. <clears throat> you're sitting there and uh you're looking out and you know it's at this time of night it's like uh the sun has set this time of year it's like it's again 7 30 encroaching on, on eight somewhere within that hour you see it starts to get dark you know and it's one of like your favorite times of year living yeah. in texas you know yeah it's uh, it's really beautiful, and and it makes you thankful for being there, right? You got a little uh, you're listening to that song, uh, the Texas Love Song by Slade Cleaves, you know. You got Bel Air Class, Dallas Smile, Austin Soul in a Lukenbach Smile, <laughs> whatever it is, you know. It's like a love letter to the state. All right. You flip that fucking thing over, right? It's just perfectly cooked. You bring it inside. Baked potato comes out of the oven. You bring the broccoli out of the microwave. How would you dress that fucking baked potato? Um, I think I would use some like, fr 
So I, I wouldn't use butter. I would use some kind of like butter substitute thing that I usually use, you know, health okay. stuff. It's lame, but I, I would definitely use that. Um, I would definitely have uh, garlic salt. Yeah. And I would season it definitely with the with the garlic sauce. Or sorry, the garlic salt. Yeah. And then. Honestly. Put some oregano on that on that motherfucker. Yeah. And Do a little herbs, a little garlic salt. Let me think. You know what? This might make me sound insane, but mm. I just love the way that I love Frank's red hot. So yeah. I would put I would definitely I wouldn't slather it or anything, but I would definitely You throw a little hot sauce on there. Yeah. Yeah. You throw enough hot sauce on there that it makes you sweat a little bit, but not too much. Onion salt. Onion salt, garlic salt, a butter sub, you know. Yeah, a butter substitute. It's, it's perfectly crispy outside skin of the potato with a creamy inside. Got a little lemon, a little butter with your broccoli, just a little bit, you know, or your, your butter sub. Yeah. You cut into the steak and it is perfect. It's exquisite. It's like <laughs> medium rare. Yeah. It's got a great sear on it. You've gotten really good at cooking steaks on the grill. Yeah, I think I would like admire it a little. You do. You admire it. You flip so, it over. Yeah. See, uh, you, you think about the presentation. You arrange it a little bit. You know, you just make it look, you make it look nice. And you take a little picture of it. Okay. You send it to this girl you've been fucking. Oh, who really? Who? Her name is Janet Shakes. Janet Shakes. What's her story? Janet Shakes it. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Jan Janet just loves to dance, you know? Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, you met Janet after a show one night. You guys hit it off. She was fun. You were fun. I have learned to uh, love to dance in this uh, this time of my life. Last couple of years, I've learned to love to dance. So you I enjoy think it sounds you know? kind of cool. Yeah. This girl just I'm a, fucking, just I believe. A thing, it's just a, thing that, uh, it's just a thing that happens. You guys are just fucking, you know? <laughs> okay. It's not like, it's not any more complicated than that. It's just what it is. And frankly, it's great. I'll leave all the tawdry details up to the listeners. Okay. Well, that's... Because we only have so much time. Oh, wow. Okay. Jesus. Dean, man. You, I mean, you know, you, you're exploring a side of yourself that you really haven't before. And, you know, you're okay with that. What do you mean? You're into like, uh, whips. Really? Yeah. You like getting whipped. <laughs> Jesus, I do. Okay. Yeah. You love it. How did I, <laughs> how did I find out that I was in, that I was into this? Um, you guys were, uh. Watching the uh, the Westminster Dog Show, <laughs> and um, you know okay. she had a she had a she had a little riding crop, and she spanked you with it, and a fucking lightning bolt of pleasure just burned through your body from the rim of your asshole down to the tip of your dick. Yeah. Just a straight bolt of pleasure. I turn around and I say, I'm into this. Yeah. And then she says, and I'm into this. And then she grabs the riding crop with both hands, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. And How from like, there. Yeah. You know. Is it getting like, um, is it basic, like, like the basics kind of, or is it like getting kind of, are we getting kind of intense with it? You're getting a little intense with it. Okay. That's interesting. You know, yeah. <clears throat> you definitely um crossed That's, some yeah. personal lines to this point. 
But Pat, if we're being honest, <laughs> yeah, you don't regret it for a second. I'm letting her do things that I normally wouldn't, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. whatever. But yeah, uh, you know, you love it. You feel free, right? Cool. I'm. Um, you know what? Fucking a, dude. Very cool. You send her the picture. She sends you a smiley face back. So, you know, you uh, eat your fucking steak. It's incredible. The baked potato, incredible. The broccoli, outstanding. You're watching the game. It's the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers versus the San Diego Chargers or Los Angeles Chargers, you know? And they're calling it the Battle of the Coasts. Wow. You know, it's a big game. Wild card implications are at stake. There's a lot going on. You know, it's a it's a pretty entertaining back and forth affair. It's like an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object kind of a thing. All in all, a thrilling game. You, uh... <clears throat> Turn the TV off, clean your dishes. You go upstairs. You go to bed content, pleased, smile on your face. I go to bed immediately after eating. Oh, yeah. That's a good steak. It's a great steak. You know, you took your time with it. You uh, you decided to let it marinate a little bit longer. You got it on the grill a little later than you would have liked, you know. Huh. You go to bed, right? I mean, uh, not like right away, obviously. Like you, yeah, that's kind of what I was. You, no, I'm sorry. My apologies. Saying. You, uh, no, you go, you go upstairs. You turn the game on. You lay there in bed. You kind of like watch it conclude. You watch the whole thing. Uh, just like it's just like what you're doing that evening. You made yourself a steak. You're gonna watch the game. You're gonna hang out. You're gonna go to bed. It's like a football game. Yeah, it's a football game. Who's playing? It was the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the the Los Angeles oh, right. Chargers. You already said that, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. The Battle of the Coasts. Battle of the Coasts, of course. How could I forget the Battle of the Coasts? So much is at stake. A lot of wild card implications, you know. Either way, you yeah, so you lay in bed. The game winds up, you know, wraps up. You just uh, just have a nice evening to yourself. You go to sleep. Wake up the next morning. Um, you've been going for like a walk around the horseshoe lately at Terrywood Glen. Yes. So you, uh, you know, you get up a little bit early, but a little bit before, you know, it's probably like eight o'clock. Right. You put on some uh, athletic shoes. It's a little chilly. You got on sweats and a hoodie. Yeah, fall in Terrywood Glen. You go. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you cruise the shoe as you call it. <laughs> Terrywood Glen. If you were looking at it from above, it would look like a, like a horseshoe, like upside mm -hmm. down. You know. Yeah. And there's like two entrances, and the horseshoe is is like the elite part of Terrywood Glen. Right. There's a bunch of like cross streets in between the two legs of the horseshoe. They are looked down upon by the people in the horseshoe. So usually oh, when you walk, that. you don't cross. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. They yeah look, it's very well I look down on them? I mean, yeah, they so live in the shitty. middle of the shoe. Who cares? I'm just telling you what happens, man. All right. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, point being, you you stick to the shoe and the shoe only. You know, you don't want to be caught in the middle. <laughs> okay. So you walk downstairs, right? You open the door, you step outside, and on your front lawn is a giant spot ring right it's like probably like three feet long it's not like a very thick gauge you know there's a lot of layers to it um almost kind of like slinky like in texture more more firm than that all right just to give you an idea um but again it's like three feet a spring but it does have some wiggle and play to it. You go, what the fuck, right? You walk over, you kind of like kick it with your foot. 
you uh you think somebody must have dropped this like this is it looks like it's not like a piece of trash or something it looks like it probably serves some kind of purpose so you go i'm just gonna throw it in my garage and i'll make a post about it so you take a picture of it you post uh the dimensions you've got like uh there's one picture with you like on your knee and you've got like a measuring tape and you're giving a thumbs up you know <laughs> you post these pictures to the terry wood glenn facebook group and you're like hey guys i found this spring in my yard this morning did somebody lose something off a truck maybe you should you share the pictures right you go for your walk around the shoe so if you're looking at the horseshoe you live at like 11 o'clock if you're looking at it from above you're in like the back left corner right it's a beautiful creek that runs back along uh, the backside of the shoe. It really is like a a truly nice spot in town. Cool, living on the shoe at TWG. Yeah, I'm a yeah, I'm a fan of uh, Terry Wood Glen for sure. You hang a right out of the door. You walk to the the, the main street with the the two entrances to uh, the suburb, the the little subdivision. People are like uh, commenting on your your post online. They're tagging other people. Hey, John Sinclair, did you did you lose this? You know, people are like tagging people who might have a use for something that looks like that. You don't think anything of it. You um, you hang a left onto the street that you turn off of, sort of like uh, bridging the gap between the two posts of the horseshoe the outer edge of the middlers as you call them we have a name for them? you walk along the sidewalk yeah you call them the middlers oh man <clears throat> yeah when they're around you call them a bet <laughs> what like bet mid like bet middler <laughs> you call them all bets that's like your secondary nickname so if there's a middler around, like middlers no <laughs> uh, you know they know they're middlers so you know <laughs> but they haven't caught on to bet and bet is like an easy you know you guys if they just haven't caught on yet all right there have been meetings about what to change it when they do catch on and so far there has not yet been uh anything that's really jumped out and made a lot of sense so it's something you guys are working on well, that's good to hear so you uh <laughs> you walk across the uh the sidewalk in front of terry wood glenn you hang a left into the opposite post and start heading back home towards the horseshoe. By the time you get home, there's like several comments um, on your post, right? And somebody's like, hey, actually, I think this is my cousin. He's an artist who's in town doing an installation. He came by my place last night and he had a load of springs in his truck and they it probably fell off as he made the turn around the shoe. And, uh, you know, he goes, and then there's like a post a couple of minutes later. He goes, yep, that looks like his. He goes, um, Pat, it, it will you be a lifesaver if you can bring it to the, uh, the Tammy Kwan Memorial Park. Okay. He's doing it. He's doing an art installation there. And this is like a pivotal piece. And he'd come back, but he would be late for the, the reveal. Okay. Can yeah, you I can bring it, please? Yeah, sure. He goes. He goes. Pat, man, you're a fucking lifesaver. Except he like he uses like the 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 characters, you know, the Grawlix thing. <laughs> so <laughs> he like censors himself on Facebook, you know. Ugh. Yeah. That's weird. So you uh you know you. You throw, uh, you get back to your house. You throw the spring in a car, in your car, right? You um, pull up the the address on your navigation, and you head out. You got the spring buckled in, just for safekeeping. You head out of the uh, of the horseshoe right 
you head to the Tammy Kwan Memorial Park, you see there's like a big fucking like parking lot full of cars. You go, holy shit, I've never seen this many people at uh, TQMP, you know? Like this whole parking lot, like, like you're looking around, they're like, what the hell is going on? And you kind of get out, you, uh, you see on the other side of the pond, there's like this uh, 12 foot tall shape it looks to be like like a human shape kind of thing you know in nature it's covered with like a a big black tarp that's sort of like pins to the ground you know <clears throat> you walk up you see you uh you see your your uh, he's not your neighbor but he's another guy on the shoe his name is uh um alfred daring and he uh he's like hey pat pat and you've got like the fucking spring on your arm and you're like hey alfred and he goes uh right back this way he goes man you're a real lifesaver you know he goes uh he's been he's been uh waiting for six months to come build this thing and you kind of he kind of like opens up the tarp alfred and he uh he leads you like inside there's a, a man who's like climbing a ladder, like adjusting the shape of thing. And it's like clearly like a looks to be like a man, you know, there's like stuff up around his head. You like you can't really see it, but it's just like, you know, it's covered with this tarp. Uh, but there's some like shape up, you know, you know, if it's like a hat or if it's like whatever it is, you just aren't really sure. But you kind of look up at it, you go, what the fuck is this? And uh, this guy comes down, he shakes your hand. He goes. Oh, hey, man. He goes, my name is uh, Caleb Daring. And uh, he goes, I'm uh, I'm, I'm like I'm like a I'm like a performance artist, you know, and I make installations in like uh, public spaces, you know, and I use my platform to like shout down aggression and violence. You know, he's like really like laying it on. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known and he goes, he goes, I mean, the number of these dudes I've known. Yeah, I got it. He like leans in and he gives you a hug where he like fist bumps you on the back and he goes, Oh, I can't thank you enough, bro. Right? Yeah. You're welcome. So he uh he like pulls the fucking um he's like he's like pulling the tarp down. And he goes, Pat, he goes, Would you do the honors? And there's like a big hole, right? It's probably like four feet up there's a ladder right there it's like a big hole and he goes you just got to push the spring through the hole and we'll fix it to this board he goes and then then everything is complete he goes will you push this through while i hammer it in place sure so he like uh he goes okay get up on this ladder right you get up on the ladder you've got your uh you're pressing this spring up against this hole just waiting to like release it so it falls through you know you're the only thing stopping it at this point you're standing on this ladder you're holding the spring in your hands pressed right up against the hole and uh caleb daring he tears down the uh the black plastic hovering you know yeah and everybody uh you hear the the crowd like kind of gasp you know and and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, and he, he points at you and he goes, my friend, Pat Dean is going to help complete this installation. And he goes, go, Pat. And you like release the spring. Right. And it like shoots out through this hole and he comes back and he like hammers it in place. And people are just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and people are like having like a visceral, like negative reaction. And you're like, what the fuck? You walk out and it's just like a picture of like a nude man with big fucking balls. <laughs> and uh, the spring is just, it's like painted to look like it's like it's a floppy penis. So it just yeah. falls out of this hole and it's just like a penis. That like, fucking springing rules. Back and forth. I mean, how, how could you not like just, that? People are just like, <laughs> they're like, oh my God, they're like put off by it. Yeah, I mean, but it's a little balls awesome on this thing but... are huge. You know what I mean? That's like, so funny. <laughs> Probably like two and a half times bigger than like a normal set of balls. All right. Well, you know, it was an honor to and be involved with this. You uh so Caleb like 
<laughs> he so you look at it and it's like you study it from the ground up. You see like these hairy men's feet, then these taut calves, bulging hamstrings, and then the bottom of this huge nut sack and a big old springy hog just hanging out of this hole, right? And then up at the top, it says, uh, I'm a fucking idiot. There's like a word bubble, right? And it's like a, it's like clearly like a naked man, but there's a word bubble that says, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> and uh the man, the man's face is like the the chief of police, right? And Wait, so Caleb Daring is, it's like it's amazing to look like the chief of police. Oh, Scott wow. Starling. Scott. Scott Starling has been like a really bad chief of police, right? Like incidents are up, right? On civil unrest is up, right? Wow. There's okay. just. There's a lot of like uh, visible corruption that gets like brought to light. You know, it's it's a it's it is a disastrous tenure as the chief of police in Austin, Texas. Wow. But, you know, they just like, you know, how hard it is to like kick a cop out of office. You know how, how yeah. hard it would be to like get a guy out like that. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the police unions fighting it. The Republicans and uh, the state legislature are fighting it. Right. Yeah. The only calls from of justice are coming from the left and those get my it's just like you know it's it's like weird texas politics stuff exactly right? what you think yeah what, what you th figured it would be That's so you know good. no it's not good so you <laughs> I think about rules, like though i mean i think know. that 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 as a piece it's so stupid that I I fuck I yeah. gotta love it. I mean that's so dumb. Yeah, I mean it clearly looks like it clearly looks like Scott Starling, but people are like amazed that somebody is like have like having the balls to like do something and like call him out. So Caleb Daring is like a uh, he's at a public park. You know he's uh, he's talking about the the era of uh, Scott Starling, wow, the Starling era when justice flew away, right? <laughs> It's like a memoir that has been written. So <laughs> he's like, you know, and there are people in the crowd who are like pro Starling and there are people who are anti Starling and it causes right. like a bit of a stir, you know, and uh, the next thing you know, the fucking cops show up. Right. And okay. people are, are in each other's faces and and it gets escalated. And it gets heated. And that springy hog never stops bouncing. I will tell you this. If I was in this situation, I would leave so fucking as soon as I figured out what was going on, I would laugh and I would just jet out of there. I'm not getting involved with any of this. This is just this is too much. So you uh you're kind of like watching this whole thing unfold, right? You're watching yeah. like civil unrest in real time. That's why like I'm you're getting watching the fuck it out of spread. There. Yeah. Right. But you're but it's like a crowd of people and you're like, what the fuck? And it's it. It it builds and builds, and then all of a sudden it's everywhere. Like it sneaks up on you this with how how quickly it spreads. God damn it! God damn it! All right, right. So people are like, you know, somebody starts shouting. There's some pushing. Hey, fuck you! Hey, fuck you! You know. Next thing you know, there's a bang, bang. You hear like gunshots ring out. Everybody screams. People drop. It is terrifying. The police show up. Right. Yeah. The police show up and they're like, hey, what the fuck is going on? You know. They see the Scott Starling visage. Caleb Daring uh, ascends a ladder and he has like a megaphone and he's sitting on Scott Starling's shoulder and he goes, he starts uh, <laughs> like harassing the cops. He starts making like <laughs> boink noises into the megaphone. Oh, right. What is this? Right. Oh, and they, they kind of, they kind of see him and they go, they go get down from there. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and he's like, fuck you pigs. Right. And you're just like watching this whole thing happen. Right. Yeah. And uh, the, some of the, the cops turn to the crowd and they go, who the who did this? And they're like, it's that guy. And this guy helped him. And they point what? at you and the cops, uh, the cops come over and they're like, what the fuck? He goes, help us get him down. And you're like, I just put I just put the penis in place, you know, and they're like, oh, you're responsible for this. Well, I go, I would tell him what happened. I said, I was just dropping something off. I don't know what's going on. But they, also, uh, he's allowed to do that. They, they, push what? You, they push you up against the. Uh, they put you up against the 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 big like the art installation. You know, it's made out of like plywood and shit. They put you up against it and it rattles. And then uh the uh Caleb Daring, he like falls off the edge and he like cracks his head open and the Jesus. cops are just kind of staring at at each other and they're like, Oh shit. 
yeah, it's like dawning kidding. on them on what to do. And then they they turn and they look and like nobody in the crowd has like can see behind the uh to see like what happened, like where he landed, and they're like, he's okay. And then they're like, We're calling an ambulance. <laughs> okay. And, and then uh, everybody's like, Oh, okay. And they turn back around and then the cops <laughs> just shoot you in the head. Oh, <laughs> they no. shoot you in the head and you fall. Uh you fall no. right there at the fucking at the base of the you know, giant Scott Starling. And somebody turns around, and they go, "Hey, what was that?" And the cops go, "Man, this guy fell over too." And and they go, "Hey, are you getting him an ambulance?" And he like puts up his radio and he goes, "Send another ambulance." And then he bleed out and die right there. <laughs> the last thing you hear is uh, the one cop turning to the other cop and he goes, "I'm not going another ambulance." <laughs> oh my god! And then you, you die right there. You die downhill. From uh, Caleb Daring and uh, the blood that's cracked open from his head runs into your mouth and you die. He you tastes his blood on your tongue. Jeez. <laughs> what? God damn. Man, that really ruled for a little while there. That was that was <laughs> really cool for a second there. And then. We had terrible <laughs> art, and then the co- God damn it! Everything I love is just <laughs> terrible art, and <laughs> the fall, and it was ruined <laughs> by this fucker and his corrupt police force. <laughs> damn, yeah. dude! Oh well. Yeah, they did not get in trouble at all. It was never even really looked into. <laughs> Once they found out it was a Scott Starling protest piece, they just burned it to the ground, and they said, "Whatever's theirs, gone now." And your body is just like ultimately burned and, uh, you know, dragged away by dogs, you know, before you completely turn to ash. When you were just as medium rare as that fucking steak, a dog rips your course out of that burning red hot fire. 